And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Howdy folks, Darren back with you here at 8th Day Chronicles at Cross Timbers Farm. I'm glad you're here with us today. I've said many times, if you're a regular visitor to our channel, we don't consider you a visitor, you're a neighbor. And a neighbor, we're glad to have you with us today. We're building an, another uh, mini round bale barrel feeder. We are so pleased with the first one we built and how it's working with the goats that we're building another one for the back of the barn for our middle pasture and probably another one later for our rotational pastures toward the back so we like them so well that we're building another one these barrel feeders for the mini round bales has worked phenomenal could not be happier with them you know for years we fed uh, small square bales and the the gentleman that we had come cut our hay for us before we ventured into cutting our own hay which uh, I'm so glad we did but it, he, he done a really good job the gentleman that come cut our hay he's a young man and he done a really good job he was really clean with our hay fields he, is, he uh, done a good job baling the hay but you know when when someone's going around bailing a lot of hay if they get rain and they get behind in their schedule and they've promised another farm that they're going to cut their hay and one before you and another before you and the rain starts setting them back and that's something they can't control i understand that uh if you're third or fourth down the list next thing you know your hay's way past prime before they can even get to you so we ventured into cutting our own hay and that's one thing that so far that uh, I do not have one moment of buyer's remorse, so to speak, of venturing into cutting our own hay. Uh, but we used uh, uh, standard small square bales for, for years. And you know, you'd have to go in the, bar, in the hay barn and pull off flakes of hay and put in the hay racks every day. And with these mini round bales, our, we've got our density setting for our for our baler on the medium heavy. It has four density settings from light to heavy, and we've got ours one notch under the heaviest to what I, which I would consider medium heavy. And it produces about a 54 pound on average mini round bale of hay. And I can take that one mini round bale of hay and drop it right down into one of these barrel feeders. And we're good for several days a week. You know, a lot of hay consumption I have found with our dairy goats and well with the meat goat breeds we had prior, um, it, a lot of the hay consumption depended on the weather. We have a lot of uh, grass still in the pastures and we usually do all winter that the animals graze on, which is good. Uh, I don't like to cut my hay very late in the year in the fall. Uh, I like to leave it time for after that last cutting for it to grow some and get up to a medium height and just leave it for the winter. What you call standing forage, I guess. But we do that and it leaves a lot on our pastures to for the animals to graze. But I've noticed in inclement weather, the hay consumption of the animals in the, in the feeders goes up. And if you're pull, pulling flakes off of a standard square bale, you know, you're, you're feeding it once, twice a day, sometimes, you know, three times a day if you're in severe weather with a lot of snow and uh, really frigid temperatures. But um, with these mini round bales, I can take the whole bale and drop it right into one of these feeders and I don't have to worry about it for a while. Just keep a monitor on it every so often, every day when I come to feed, I check to see how much is left in the feeder. And at the appropriate time, when that one's empty, I just drop another one in. Best system I've ever used. We did a video back um, early in the fall, late summer, 
not long ago on a one of these builds for one of these hay feeders for the mini round bales and if you haven't watched that go into our uh, playlist and, and find that video and check it out it goes step by step on how we build one of these feeders one thing we did on the first build the first feeder we built when we cut the feeding windows out we i cut them a little too big uh i didn't realize that till the goats fed out of it for a while and i could watch them and sit and watch and i cut those windows too big so this one i'm gonna cut it a little the windows now more narrow and i'm gonna put an, an additional support leg under the barrel support arm and it's not really to support the barrel it's to support where the base is to keep the back from wanting to pull loose from the base even though we had a bunch of screws in it um, you know how goats are they want to jump put your feet up on stuff and uh, that's just the way they are and uh, I think an additional brace from that arm down to the base will solve that issue so a couple of little modifications we're going to do to this new one um, and like I said the uh, the first one has worked so well that we're building another and probably another one so I got a couple of barrels and we're going to build them and use them and this will have a few different things about it than the first one um, you know when you build something or buy something and start using it you always look at things after six eight months that you think hmm you know I'd like to change this about it or that about it so I think this one will be an improvement over the first one and I'm not going to show you every step of this there's no need to we had a uh, like I said we have a video uploaded of this hay feeder build for the first one and this one's basically the same I've already cut my uh, notch here for my barrel arm support to sit in and I've got to cut a few more cuts on this main spine or main post that the barrel hangs on and uh, I'll just quickly go through that with you and then we'll uh, have another one built and ready to go so thanks for being with us today we appreciate it okay folks we're going to cut a joint here in the bottom of our post the very bottom of the spine of the post for our base we're going to put a, a four by four base that comes out uh, and we want it to attach very strongly to the base of this spine post what i call the spine of the of the mount and in order to do that we're going to cut for it to be real strong we're going to cut a joint here that where a four by four will fit right in it halfway we've adjusted our our skill saw or our circular saw to cut at a depth of an inch and three-fourths and a four by four a uh, what i call a factory four by four is three and a half inches by three and a half inches the way the the industry labels lumber is very misleading when you buy a two before you're only buying a one and a half by three and a half when you buy a four before you're buying a three and a half by three and a half so half of three and a half is an inch and three quarter so we want this joint to be half the depth of our spine so the base piece can mount right in there and mount halfway into it for strength and we've adjusted our circular saw here uh, to cut at a depth of one and three quarters now bear in mind that there's probably better tools to use to cut joints like this than a circular saw but that's all i have and i've learned over the years how to do it and you just keep making cuts 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 until it really thin and then you can take your saw and just go back and forth and cut them all out and you've got a nice joint however when you do this when you get most of the uh the cut down to real thin pieces and you start going back and forth with it with your saw it will throw pieces of that really thin 
wood chips like that everywhere do not well you should you should wear safety glasses even if you're just making a normal cut to protect your eyes from sawdust and things of that nature but if you're using a skill saw or a circular saw to make cuts like this um, number one always be mindful of kickback have a firm grip I mean a firm grip on your saw and never do this without safety glasses on because those chips will go flying and you could you know put an eye out you know at nothing so uh, the Christmas story with Ralphie and the Red Rider BB gun about putting your eye out it's very true when it comes to this except it's not a Red Rider it's a Makita circular saw and a four before so safety first safety first Okay, we got our barrel support mounted. We've run three inch screws from the back of our spine post up in. And this is, this is uh, two foot for the barrel to sit on. And here is the main spine for our base. This one is also two foot. So uh, they're both uh, been had screws running from under them uh, from the back side up into and they have uh, been put in the joints that we've cut out for, for added strength and really I don't even have a brace post on this yet but it is already super strong so with nothing but the screws when you put it in these joints so it's coming right along we'll go ahead and get our uh, brace post cut it a 45 and then get our um, base built and we're moving right along okay we've got our second barrel feeder stand done the only thing I've done different with this one as far as the stand goes is I shortened these braces a little bit and added one right here that goes from this brace down to the main four before that's the leg or the foot, I guess you might want to call it, uh, for stability. Uh, to keep this from ever wanting to, this really never moved, but where this is notched um, at the bottom and it's not encased, it just goes in encased in two sides. Well, I guess you could say three, but um, it could push down. Um, and putting this brace here and attach it with screws to pull it up and keep it tight should eliminate that problem. So uh, we're ready to put the barrel on. We gotta cut the feed windows, which is pretty simple. Drill some holes in the bottom of it for uh, water to escape if it ever gets in it. And we're gonna actually try to put some flaps on this barrel. Uh, to shed rain even better so 
All right, the stand's done. We're ready to start working on the barrel. Okay, folks, we got our another feeder built. We designed this one just a little bit different. Not a whole lot. Uh, it's still a portable unit with a base where we can just move it around. You know, you can take these things, and if, you, if you're going to put this somewhere permanent, and you don't plan on ever moving it. I mean, that's where you want it. And that's where it's going to stay. You can just you can just get a set of post hole diggers and dig you a hole, and put your post just straight down in the ground. Uh, Four sack a quick crate around it if you want to, or just tamp it in real good, and that'll be just fine. You don't have to go through all this building of this base like I did here. But uh, we want ours to be able to move, so that's why we have the base on it. We cut our uh, feed windows a little smaller on this one. Uh, I think we'll, for goats, will help. And also we cut a rain deflector on the top. And I'll bring the camera over here and show you that. I don't think you can see it from that distance, but we cut a small rain deflector on it. I believe it'll work well. So this one's ready to have a mini round bell dropped in it and get to feeding. Okay, as you can see, here's the the rain deflectors that we cut in them. You can see them, they stick out just a little ways uh, to kind of, if the rain hits on the side of the barrel, run down and drip off and miss the window. As you can see, I need to probably bend them out just a little bit further, but they're bent pretty decent. They should shed some rain. So I think that's a good addition. And we've got our eye bolt in the top to where we can secure it. Because, uh, you know, goats will want to jump on stuff and knock it over. So we'll secure it to the wall. And uh, we've got our square U bolts mounted. And it's, it's done. I've washed it out a little bit to get all those plastic shavings and everything out of there. So, um, uh, as soon as it dries up good the next day or two we will put her to use okay folks thanks for being with us here today at cross timbers farm and our eighth day chronicles channel we appreciate you being with us and if you uh use a mini round baler and feed mini round bales uh, if you're used to using square bales and pulling flakes if you ever start using a mini round bale for your hay, you're gonna love it. Uh, I wouldn't even consider going back to a small square bale at this point. Uh, and these behind me, these hay feeders are fantastic. Uh, the goats love them and so do we. It cuts our work down every day. Thanks for being with us. God bless and have a good evening.